Okay, let's talk about algebra calculators and math solvers. And what I want to do here is talk about what is the best one. So before I answer that question, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, for many, many years, I've developed uh, a lot of online math courses. I'm going to leave a link to my Tablet Class Math program in the description of this video. But what I want to do is uh, obviously answer the question, what is the best one? I'm going to answer this uh, immediately, okay? Because if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, I'm going to have... I'm going to give you a chance to <laughs> opt out. In other words, hey, you're like, hey, get to the gist. What is the best one? So I'm going to tell you right now, the best one is your brain, okay? That is the best calculator, the, the best math solver. Now, I don't want to uh, dismiss the value of actual calculators and uh, software. So I'm going to speak to that as well, okay? And the pros and cons of uh, using uh, algebra calculators and math solvers. But... In uh, the end, though, I want you to remember that nothing is better than your own uh, brain in terms of uh, solving um, mathematical uh, problems, okay? Now, let, there's, this is kind of a, a, a broad topic, and um, just stick with me for a few minutes, and I think that this will be, if uh, anything else, you know, informative, okay, in terms of, um, you know, not making a mistake by depending on a calculator or a solver, kind of using it uh, as the software is best intended to be used. Okay, so let's get into it. So in modern day uh, math, I mean, you know, using a calculator is absolutely uh, a great thing that we're able to do, okay? Because before that, you'd have to do everything by hand uh, calculation. So using a calculator, you should not feel guilty about using a calculator. Matter of fact, it's a necessary part Here's my little calculator here. Um, it's a necessary part of, you know, modern day mathematics, okay? And it's an absolutely critical tool to be able to solve um, things, uh, problems that involve a tremendous amount of calculations. Now, so this is kind of the calculator kind of scenario. And we've been using calculators for a good, you know, I'd say handheld calculators, probably on order of, let's say, 50 years. Now, the people that used to have these calculators were like engineers and stuff way back in the early 70s, 60s, and <laughs> even a basic calculator back then would have cost several thousand dollars, but now the calculators are just, uh, you know, ridiculous in terms of what they're able to do. I mean, if you pick yourself up like a TI-83, uh, TI-84, something like that, I mean, you just got a massively powerful computer, and I can almost guarantee you that... 99.9% .9 of the people watching this video, if you have a TI-83 or TI-84, you would have to spend, you would have to have, like spend years to be able to understand all the function and its capabilities. It's, they're tremendously powerful tools. And uh, TI, uh, they're, they're very popular calculators. Actually, my favorite calculator, TI-83 or TI-84, but they're basically, you know, computers, uh, more or less, okay? Um, so, this will take care of all, pretty much all your needs out there in terms of, you know, even adv super advanced math, engineering, mathematics, etc. Now, of course, we have the computer and online computers, online tools. So when we're talking about solvers, math solvers, and now we get into like more advanced software, okay? And this is really powerful stuff as well. Um, now, I'm not going to name any brand names, but there's a lot of different popular brand names out there. And uh, this software is also really beneficial in terms of uh, exploring mathematical concepts and actually solving a lot of math problems, okay? Uh, so whether they're advanced differential equation problems, numerical analysis problems, calculus type problems, you know, there's a huge benefit to using math solvers, calculators, etc. okay? However, Here's the problem where I've kind of um, seen throughout the years is that students, they tend to get a little bit uh, too comfortable or over-dependent on using a calculator or a math solver. In other words, they you know don't want to do the work. They don't want to think about, they just want to plug it in, <laughs> plug in the problem and get an answer. And that's human nature. Everyone's looking for the path of least resistance. But here's the problem with that is... One, you're actually not going to 
be reinforcing the actual mathematical concepts that you need to understand. These, remember, software and calculators and stuff, these are tools. They aid you in solving the problem. But you yourself need to understand the mathematical concepts. Okay, so when you're, the best results from you using these tools, okay, these calculators, is to focus on really making sure that your personal calculator, your brain here, let's kind of just draw a little stick figure right here. Nothing is more powerful than this guy right here, okay? This brain trumps all of this big time, <laughs> okay? So if you think about it, even like some of the more advanced algorithms that are used to today in solving uh, um, high order mathematical problems, these algorithms, in other words, the, the steps, the procedures, were developed, a lot of them were developed hundreds of years ago, okay? Uh, but back in those days, you know, they didn't have an actual, and you know, they might have some sort of basic mechanical calculator, but electronic calculator software, you know, these again are tools to aid you um, in solving. And they're necessary tools, okay? There's, in other words, if you're doing advanced mathematics, you just don't want to be doing things by hand. Now, I'm going to age myself a bit. Uh, when I went to high school in the 80s, in the early 80s, uh, back in those days, uh, you would learn, let's say, a course like Algebra 2. Um, and I don't even know today. I'd have to check and see. But um, I'm pretty certain that m uh, some textbooks, a lot of textbooks, don't have tables uh, in them in the back. Tables of values for like logarithms or trigonometric values and stuff. But back in the good old days... This was a big part of learning mathematics. In other words, going in and physically looking up a value for a logarithm or a trigonometric function um, and, you know, using those values either by hand calculation. There was things called inter interpolation. Uh, there was just a lot of other crazy stuff that we used to learn um, back in the good old days that, you know, required, you know, a lot, a lot more work, Okay. And so there's pros and cons to it. I mean, yes, you're learning, you're appreciating the concepts uh, more, but then again, it took more time away to do those calculations where you can better invest that time in learning other things or, or you know, applications to solve problems. But, uh, you know, so I'm not against technology, and I think it's absolutely a necessary part of learning a math, especially advanced math. Uh, you take, like, for example, TI-83, um, looking at functions using the graphing capability is huge, okay? So just to be able to look at graphs of functions and whatnot on your calculator are excellent. But if you use uh, like a, uh, uh, a math solver or some sort of advanced calculator software where you can actually see much more, uh, in a much more sophisticated um, graph on what's going on, I mean, these are high order, you know, professional tools. This is what you know, like engineers and uh, et cetera, those type of folks, they already know the math, but they're using these tools to help them out. So really my, my um, you know, video here is directed towards students that are learning. Okay. So just be careful. If you're asked to learn, you're probably, um, if you're watching this video, you're probably being asked to use a particular software in class. So that's kind of a normal type thing, but don't, you know, if that's not your case and you're just kind of browsing around looking for some sort of like algebra solver, something that you can just plug in, you know, uh, uh, your problem and, and, and it spits out the answer. If you're kind of looking uh, for something like that because you're struggling with the concept, then you're doing yourself a tremendous disservice. OK, and you're, it's it's only going to kind of get uh, worse, <laughs> if you will, in terms of. Uh, you're going to, you're going to make such an investment and in try to find a calculator or a math solver to help you bridge the gap of not understanding that even when you do get the results, you're not going to be able to really understand the concepts anyway. So don't go too far down that road. Remember the best thing you could do is to work on developing your brain first. Okay. And learn the concepts. Uh, and then once you can do problems, you know, one or two problems by hand and you understand the the, the procedures involved uh, to solve these various type of problems, then you can, you know, um, use these tools. And that's how your teacher you know, intends anyways for you to be able to use a calculator um, or some sort of software. Now, one thing, an interesting thing is 
on many, many tests, okay, that are out there, um, exams, etc., they do not allow calculators or software. If they do, it would be maybe some sort of basic online tool, and that's not going to be for every single question as well, okay, because again, they're expecting you to know these concepts uh, individually. So, and one other thing too, let me just mention, it's been my experience that, uh, um, I've seen calculators and math solvers actually produce incorrect results or uh, the the results or answers are not um, as clear, okay, uh, or let's say as accurate as, as they, they can be. So you got to be careful, too, with uh, these things. I'll tell you a fast, fast story. It has nothing to do with math. Uh, if you want to leave the video now, I, tell you, I get it. But I'm going to tell you a quick, quick story, okay, way, way back in the early 90s. Um, I was taking a Spanish class, okay? And this, this story I'm telling you is going to relate to what we're talking about here. I was taking a Spanish class, and at that time, I was also buying a um, my one of my first computers. So I bought myself a little Mac computer. And um, so I bought this Mac computer, and I'm browsing around uh, in my college uh, store, and I see a nice disc or cassette, I think it was back then, software was a Spanish translator, Spanish translator. I was like, oh, wow, great. So I could put this software into my little computer here and type in English, okay, and out would come Spanish, the Spanish equivalent of it. So I was super excited about that, and our first assignment was, uh, hey, you know, write something about your you know, where you're from or whatever the case, introduce yourself to the class. So I typed it up because I was being um, lazy and, and not really wanting to learn Spanish because it wasn't my, you know, forte. I didn't have a good aptitude for it. But I typed in my stuff in English and I was going to get something out in Spanish and be like, okay, well, I'll just learn Spanish as I go along. But for this particular assignment, this is what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to plug in my English. I'll get out my Spanish. So I turned this in. I turned this into the teacher and the teacher distributed this off to um, the other students in the class. So we all randomly got somebody. Here I am. I have someone, other students' uh, uh, assignment. And this person over here, they actually have my assignment. So I'm reading this person's thing in Spanish. You know, like, I'm from here, and I like this, and I want to be this when I grow up, or whatever the case is. And it all made sense because they actually did the work and they understood the basic Spanish. When they got to mine, somebody said, hey, read John's. And when they read mine, it made absolutely zero sense. It was completely embarrassing. <laughs> the translator, the computer totally failed me. Okay. Uh, and I thought I was, you know, putting it in correctly. Okay. I was typing it in in English and using it as... Um, as I thought it was supposed to be used, but guess what? My re results were absolutely horrendous. Okay. So this can happen with, uh, calculators and math solvers. If you don't even know, even with a basic calculator, if you're not putting in the right, say parentheses and those things, you can make, there's so many mistakes that students make, even with using calculators. Again, you need to know the math. You need to know, um, how to do things without the aid of software or calculators, especially in this day and age when we have our smartphones and, and walking around. But this is, you know, even back, you know, boy, I don't know, 30 years ago plus when I was going through this, even then, you know, it's, you know, it's human nature to want it to save time or, or to, to, you know, rely on technology. But you got to remember, this stuff is not perfect. And back then it was definitely not perfect, as I found out, you know, in this manner. But today as well, I mean, there's a lot of great programs out there uh, and very, very accurate. I'm not saying that, hey, you can't trust the results uh, on a lot of this stuff. But if you're not communicating correctly with the calculator or the software, if you don't know what you're doing in advance, okay, you're going to get uh, results that are not going to make sense to you, right? So I think I've made my point well enough here. Um, in terms of uh, the actual software that's out there, there's a lot of great programs. Even back in my day, there was a lot of great uh, software programs. So, uh, you know, you may not have a choice. You may be taking a class where you have to use a particular calculator or so or software or solver. So just, you know, use what you're told to use and, and master that. In terms of calculators, uh, for me, I'm very partial to Texas Instrument, TI, 
T I eighty three, T I eighty four, and you can actually do quite a bit of algebra, matrices, and stuff. But again, you're going to have to really take uh, some time uh, to invest in learning about the T I eighty three and T I eighty four, the full functionality, because there's a tremendous amount of uh, that. And the T I eighty three has been around for you know, a long time, good fifteen years, maybe even longer than that, fifteen twenty years or so. Uh, so this is an excellent calculator. Then you got the T I eighty four, which is more advanced. There's probably more advanced calculators out for now, but trust me, even the good old T I eighty three will serve just about you know anyone's needs and beyond. So you don't have to go and you know break the bank to buy the most you know uh, sophisticated high end uh, calculator. You know you could still do pretty well with any of these. Yeah, but again, a good crowd, uh, good graphing calculator, excuse me, it's still going to run you, um, you know, at least like a hundred dollars somewhere in that neck of the woods, unless you get one used, which is uh, perfectly fine as well. Save yourself some money. Okay. So it's going to wrap up this video. Um, so if you're still with me, I definitely appreciate that. You know, I'm always posting uh, content. I've been on YouTube for many, many years. Uh, math is my passion. So I love to post anything that I think could help you out, learn math, posting all the time. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it beneficial, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, what calculator are you using? What um, uh, math solver are you using? Are you struggling with it? Are you um, thinking about using one? You know, any feedback is good feedback. And again, I want to invite you uh, to sign up for my tablet class math uh, courses. I have a wide uh, variety of middle and high school and more advanced math uh, courses. Um, I'll leave the link to my program in the description of this video. But remember, the thing about math is this, you know, there's just no cheating the system. Cheating uh, and, you know, you have to spend the time building up your skills, okay? And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things, and not just with math, you know, most of, if you want to do well in things, it takes time and it takes hard work to really kind of get yourself, you know, to build your skills. But as you're building your skills and learning, okay, again, you, you know, you should be using these tools, calculators, software, that's all good stuff. Okay. But nothing again is going to replace your brain, make an investment in your brain. Okay. Don't depend on a calculator or software to think for you. I think that's the main message that I was trying to communicate. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. Hopefully, hopefully you got something uh, good out of this video. And uh, have a great day.